The Mongol Empire is comprehended between the years 1206 and 1368. Genghis Khan was a propeller of this empire that has its foundations in the unification of the Mongol territories. It is known that during its apogee, the empire managed to unify a large number of lands for what is said to have been the largest in the world. Throughout these 150 years of dominance, several Khans were leaders of this empire. This video focuses on the period of maximum expansion between the death of Genghis Khan in 1227 and the ascension of to the throne of Kublai in 1260. In 1206, Genghis Khan was elected Khan of Khans in an assembly to unify the nation and the group of approximately one million warriors he came to unite became known as Mongols. Genghis Khan divided his warriors into a band, which were groups of 10 soldiers from different sectors of the Mongolian society and ordered them to live and fight together. As well, he implemented a new legal code, the Yasa, which made it possible to eradicate the main causes of conflict at the time, such as the kidnapping and sale of women, enslavement or death penalty applied to cattle thieves. In addition to all these actions, it is also known that Genghis Khan decided to eliminate aristocratic titles and to promote people according to their achievements, establish a writing system, regular census, diplomatic immunity to foreign ambassadors, and freedom of religion. The leader managed to build an entire empire from scratch, leaving with it a historical legacy that endures to this day. After Genji's death, Ogodei was named Khan of the Mongols and ruled from 1229 until 1241. During Ogodei's regime, the Mongols invaded a region and caused considerable devastation. In this new borderland, the Mongols established a military force known as Tama, which used the region to control the Mongol frontiers as well to launch raids or to intimidate neighboring powers. The strategy followed was called the Tsunami Strategy. To perform this military strategy, the troops follow a specific pattern. They would gather information from previous attacks, diplomatic missions, and from merchants and travelers. They would organize their offense, and the occupation would take place when the Mongol troops attacked. Then they would divide themselves into different columns to create a chaos, and eventually they would merge again in a certain region. The Mongols were also known for being the first gunpowder empire, which may not have been possible if they had not conquered the Jurchen Jin Empire in 1234. For instance, the Mongols imitated Jin's dynasty great arsenal of weapons, such as the catapults, the incendiary bombs, the fire lancers, and the fire arrows. Another thing that they absorbed from Jin's would be their art for wars, thanks to the former Jin military and commanders that submitted to the Mongol troops. China, during the Song Dynasty, was one of the Mongols' neighboring territories that had not been conquered by them. A first attempt to conquer Song's territory, several battles took place, but the Mongols ended up making an alliance with the Song Dynasty. However, peace would not last long because the Mongols began attacking Song's territory. This conflict lasted until 1259, when Mongol Khan, Ogodei's successor, died in the battlefield while fighting the Song's troops. It was believed that the Mongol Empire could be united and last as long as Genghis Khan descendants could decide who would be the next Khan. After the current one was deceased, but they end up engaging into a fight that would escalate into a civil war, the Toluit Civil War, which took place between 1260 and 1264. Kublai Khan's mandate during the period of 1260 and 1294 established an administration and policies to support the economic, social, and political aspects of China. 
Additionally, from 1275 to 1291, Marco Polo, a Venetian merchant, was in China and was able to acquire knowledge of the political and economic systems of the Mongol Empire. Kublai Khan's reign was focused on the systems of agriculture and trade, whereas the population was engaged in agriculture and an animal husbandry and paid taxes in currency, the Mongol state was focused on the extraction of wealth. The Mongol state had many ways to increase its wealth. The wealth was redistributed between the Khan and his retinue. Further, the state found in various economic sectors the monopoly resources and foreign trade a source of boosting its wealth. In terms of money, the state found in the use of paper money an alternative to threaten the population. This can be acknowledged in Marco Polo's statement when noting that not only were the inhabitants forced to use the can's fired money and pain death, they were prohibited from using alternative currencies and were regularly compelled to surrender the gold, silver, and precious gems to the can. Further, Kublai Khan set some prohibitions and regulations. Although gambling was criminalized, not all activities were prohibited, but they came with regulations so for the state to control resources. Additionally, Marco Polo comments that freedom of all kinds was very limited since, for example, guards were searching at night for inhabitants to imprison since the state implemented a prohibition on the hours being outdoors. The distinct Mongolian identity was maintained during all the candidates, even though the different camps were more prone to be identified with the societies they ruled. They shared the importance of using Mongolian in communications with authorities and the need to acquire an adapted version of the Uyghur alphabet so as to use the language in official correspondence. A main aspect of their identity was the experience that all can share as nomads since the relation of the usage of land differ from sedentary societies. During the era of Genghis Khan, Mongols did not have a specific capital and Genghis will often take the court and advisors with him in a juror. It was not until Agudei's reign that the capital had other purposes, but it continued to be used for storing purposes. Furthermore, it was during the Pax Mongolica, alluded to the period before the disintegration of the Mongol Empire, that Mongols implemented a trade infrastructure after the name of Ortu and permitted the improvement of various, various routes such as the Silk Road in terms of safety and time, and that Europeans were able to obtain Asian luxury items. With the emergence of the Ortu system, diseases also began to spread, as an example, it is found in the bubonic plate in the latter 14th century. As a consequence, commerce and the Mongol Empire were greatly affected by the plague and produced the collapse of the Orto network. In addition, legal and institutional infrastructure was provided. In order for the authorities to compare prices and facilitate trade, the Mongols made sure that weight and measurements were the same throughout the empire. In terms of money, in 1253, Monka Khan created an administration to make possible the payment of taxes in paper money. Further, the days and months of the years were standardized. Since the observatories of Ilkhanate and China showed the same astronomical data, time was determined with precision and extended all over the empire. <laughs> 